Hey everyone, welcome back to Lead with Worship, a worship podcast from the team here at Saddleback Church. My name is John Cassetto, and I get to be the global worship pastor here at Saddleback. And on this podcast, you'll hear from artists, creatives, and guests as we uncover the heart and the purpose of worship. Throughout our time together, our prayer is that you would be encouraged, inspired, and challenged in your own creative journey and worship leadership. You know, here at, at our team, probably like yours, uh, we understand that there's a balance to practicing rest and still running after the call of God on your life. And we live in that balance and that tension. And through many seasons, we feel like we get that balance right. And then there's also uh, many other seasons where we really struggle with that balance, with rest, but still running after and pursuing the call of God on our life. So on today's episode, you're going to hear from Josh Miller, our worship development pastor, and Daniel Scotty, who is our, our production director for all of our campuses. So for our campus support side of things and our teams. And then of course, Taylor Williams, who does a great job uh, just asking great, intuitive, and thoughtful questions. So here we go. Let's dive into today's conversation. Let's do it. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Lead with Worship. My name's Taylor, and I'm one of the worship leaders here at Saddleback Church. And today with, I'm with my friends, Josh Miller and Daniel Scotty. How you guys yeah. doing? Uh, what's <laughs> Good up? to see you all. Um, for those of you who don't know, Daniel Scotty is our central production director overseeing production at all of our regional locations. And Josh Miller is our worship development pastor overseeing platform team and worship leaders, music directors at all of our regional locations. Good to see you guys. Thanks yeah, for it's good to be here. Thanks jumping for on today. Inviting me. Yes, yes. It's good to be here. We're going to have some good conversation today about... Um, not burning out and rest and margin, but also just what does balance look like in the life of, of serving the local church? And we're gonna have some great conversation around that. But before we dive into all of that, I would love for people to know what is something that you guys do for fun that's completely not related to ministry? Would love to know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, the hesitance, Took you a second the, to think. The hesitance yeah. in that answer probably tells you how bad I am at, <laughs> at the topic we're talking about today. Uh, it's funny. You know, I'm a huge sports fan. So honestly, one of the things I like to do um, when I'm at home or driving, I like, I like sports podcasts. I like to go to sports games like events or games. Um, I just really love sports. I'm kind of like, that's like where I, I get to just, you know, nerd out and, and be whatever. I, I like to listen to yeah. different podcasts, watch ESPN. And so that'd probably be my thing. Nice. I love it. Um, I like to play Spider-Man. Uh, yes. I, I have a... <laughs> A busy That's good. <laughs> three-year-old. I've, maybe I should have led with that. I have You're a busy, the best Peter Parker. Yeah. I'm, it's usually multiverse while, <laughs> while we play. but you were, the, you were missing from the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I find so much enjoyment in just like getting into my, you know, I, I have a three, a three and a half year old and an almost two year old. And I love just like getting into their little worlds, whatever it may be. It's been really, that's been my like, refilling. I just feel full after, you know, spending some time imagining and playing and stuff with my kids, which is great. If I'm, uh, with my wife, we love to like, we're kind of foodies. So we love just finding new food spots and eating, sharing a good meal together. It's also, that's really super enjoy fun. that. Yeah. I really love that. That's super fun. I love hearing that from you guys. Just things that we do that are outside of the norm of what we get to set our, yeah. set our hands and stuff too, too. What about you, Taylor? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, you didn't think about that one, did you? I, <laughs> My goal on this, on this episode is to get Taylor in, in as many yes. <laughs> moments where he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> Man, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, I, I'm trying to think of something that's totally not related. I love music and musician. I love writing songs and even songs that just have nothing to do with um, our church context. I feel like that's a little too close though. 
Um, things yeah, that have nothing to do. No, <laughs> doesn't count. At all. <laughs> things that have nothing to do with ministry whatsoever. I, uh, I love Star Wars and I love mm. video games. And so, yeah, nice. Just diving like into into that stuff, I think is is super fun. Just a way to disconnect and to, yeah, just yeah. hang out with people. Super fun. So, yeah, I love that. Doesn't get me anywhere in life either. Sometimes I do things. I'm like. Oh, that's a hobby. But I'm like, dude, like you're reading like leadership books. That's not like a hobby. Like that's like, that like advances you and develops you. I'm I'm like video games. It's not taking me anywhere. I'm not going to like, you know, so it was important for me to find that for sure. That's awesome. For sure. Gosh. Well, I'd love for people to know, um, we're just going to drive straight into the deep end as we talk about as we talk about rest and margin and also fully living out the calling that God has on our lives as servants in the house of the Lord. So I'd love to ask you first, have either of you ever been close to burning out in ministry at any point yeah. in your time at church? Yep. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the short answer is yes. I'll just go right in. I, I, I told you, Taylor, I'd probably mention this story. Um, so first of all, I'm probably the worst at this, so I'm not really sure why I'm on this episode, but I think maybe what's helpful is, is I'm not where I was seven years ago when I first Mm. started at Saddleback. So I think there is something to progress and, and, and growing in something. But when I first was at Saddleback, um, I don't even remember what happened, but I found I found myself having a panic attack, mm. and I found myself um, in the emergency room because I had allowed, you know, the things um, that I put my hands to dictate, you know, my identity and my and my happiness. Mm. And not to get too serious, like off, off the bat, but I I did realize early on that um, my worth was so much more than the product that I created, or the yeah, or the or the word that I gave, or the song that I sang. That my worth was actually in my identity as a as a son of God and. And what he was teaching me in the season he had me in and how, and my growth. And so I found myself, you know, kind of having a panic attack. And I I realized like, if I don't change some habits, I will burn out. I Hmm. will, I'll probably leave church ministry and I won't be a very good person. I won't be a very good husband or, or son or friend. So yeah, it has happened. That was that was probably the biggest one. And I remember just having this reality and I remember someone in my life who who's a mentor in my life tell me when tell me when that happened was like you're not you're not that important that everything is on your shoulders. Hmm. So there there has to be a season of surrendering hmm. some things in your life that you feel you are completely in control of. Yeah. And I and I think that was so helpful for me early on in my in my ministry time was realizing that that the church, not just Saddleback Church, but the global church is on is on the foundation of Christ, not the foundation of mm-hmm. Josh Miller. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of really freeing when you when you come to terms with that and you're replaceable. Every one of us is replaceable because it's not built on us. Um, we get to add and contribute to it, but mm-hmm. we're not, it's not built on us alone. Hmm. Yeah. I know uh, for me, most of my like times of burnout have been based on me focusing on the wrong things hmm. and not being aware of kind of just different tanks in my life of spiritual, like, how am I doing spiritually in my my walk with the Lord and my daily quiet time? And how am I doing with my community and relationships outside of work? And how am I doing with family? And, you know, sometimes when I neglect some of the other areas, 
then I start to run low. You know, it's like a car. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you're, you know, you could drive your car with without, you know, windshield fluid for a little bit until your window gets so bad that you have to like get something to clean the windshield or, or different fluids and stuff like that. So like for me, uh, you know, when I was younger and, and learning, um, first time being in full-time ministry was here at Saddleback and, um, stepping into like my first leadership type position, I just got so focused on the wrong things that I, I just like <laughs> burnt myself into the ground by overdoing and overthinking and, and putting these expectations on myself that actually no one was expecting of me. And maybe some of it was like, I wanted to achieve these things or be helpful or, you know, um, but I never took time to like step back and process where am I at in this? Um, and just kind of like work through it. Um, mm -hmm. which is really what led to, to burnout for me. Um, so now like, you know, being here for 15 years, I feel like I'm able to identify, identify these like little red flags a little bit easier than I was when I first started of like, Oh, yeah. that's like, there's a little sign of, you know, I'm, I'm not having enough, you know, time with my family. I'm noticing like tension in, in my marriage or I'm noticing like, I just want to disconnect when I get home or something that I feel like those are just little flags that I could kind of guard myself from then. Um, and then what do I have to do in, in preparing for like heavy and busy seasons? You know, we're all stepping into Easter yeah. and, um, sometimes you, you look, you know, my wife and I were looking at our, our calendar, um, for March and it's, it's truly March madness. Um, and it, it was, <laughs> I'm so proud of you for making that sports, reference. man. Thank, um, thank you, sports Daniel. teams and stuff, but yeah, March was like really busy for my wife and I, and it kind of took us looking at the calendar and being like, okay, we know this is going to be a really busy two weekends and, you know, um, coordinating stuff with our kids and family events and all this stuff that you, we kind of like save those for when we really need to. And we kind of just like brace it together and at least we're aware of, okay, we know this is going to be really busy. Um, and kind of same mm -hmm. thing with Easter. It's like, all right, what's the schedule I'm trying to communicate with my family as much as possible so that there's, if there's things that don't have to be surprises aren't, you know, mm. um, that's been helpful for me in like guarding some of that burnout, because if I just like go and go and go, then I start neglecting and forgetting to communicate and mm -hmm. just kind of tail spins into it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that guys. That's really good. I, I mean, thinking about like your stories and because that's super helpful, Daniel, like you're sharing like the little red flags that you look for. I heard something too, like in, in your story, Josh, of like there was a mentor in your life, you know, that you were able to like lean into. And so I just mm -hmm. would love to ask, like looking backwards and like also looking at like the growth and development of just your own journeys, like what is, what does rest, balancing rest and running hard in ministry look like in your own life today? Yeah, I, um, in Luke, in Luke five, I have it up on my phone. It, it says that it said Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and mm. prayed. Mm. And I've always loved that that passage of scripture because it was it's obvious that Jesus didn't like compartmentalize rest and and his work like they went hand in hand. Mm. And so G, so I always I I would always read the gospels and see that Jesus, his identity was wrapped up in his, his sonship to father God. And his ministry was an overflow of his prayer life and his identity found in his father. Hmm. And so it, it everything kind of worked in tandem with each other. And so being, you know, in full-time ministry for a while now and seeing my dad do it really well when he was alive and in ministry is that it's almost like you have to have this constant dialogue with the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and not just when it's Easter week or conference week or yeah. when it's busy, but just like having a constant, constant prayer language of like, what are you teaching me today, Lord? Or what are things I need to surrender to you today, Lord? Or 
just a just an open channel because i think our i think oftentimes we make it to our sabbath or we make it to our day off and we just collapse on the couch and watch netflix yeah. and then we hope that that's going to carry us the rest of the week but it's it's the classic phrase everyone's heard it like instead of resting from your work but working from rest hmm. like the uh, the changing the paradigm and saying I'm actually going to live a life that's restful and prayerful and my ministry is going to be the overflow from that posture and place. And so not to over spiritualize it, but I think the practices are just really simple, but like daily quiet time. Hmm. So like for me, practically I'm a morning person. I like to wake up at, at five and I like to exercise. And then I like to have my quiet time right after that. And, and just, I, I uh, I do the YouVersion app, uh, the the daily um, um, you know reading scripture every day and praying, and making sure that's like the start of my day. Mm-hmm. Um, Pastor Rick did something yeah. really special with staff during lockdown, where it's um, his word first word, his word last word, yeah. and just opening and closing each day with God's word, which was life changing. Yeah. But starting the day like that and making it a constant like dialogue, and I'm definitely not perfect at it, um, have a long ways to go. But I think it's just implementing those practices each and every day because that's what Jesus did. Yeah, he he was really good at like peacing out um, and getting mm-hmm. alone with the with God, with with his Father. That way, he was always replenished and he was always ready for mm-hmm. whatever his assignment was. Yeah, that's so good. I'm just here listening. No, and, you know, uh, somewhat for me, you know, the verse in uh, Jeremiah 17 of just like the tree being planted is often for me of like, if I'm, if I'm rooted to the source and connected and have, you know, the right perspective of what God's doing in my heart and what he's stirring in me, um, that tends to help when there are heavy seasons of, mm-hmm. of storms and trials and, and stuff like that, that there's, um, I've already been storing up for it, you know, yeah. rather than just like That's running great. to it in the moment of like, oh man, I haven't really been bracing for or filling my soul up for what my soul needs prior to a big Easter week. Cause mm-hmm. then once Easter week comes at the end of the week, one of the, the greatest things we get to celebrate as a church, I'm I'm just like depleted and I'm grumpy and I'm, yeah. you know, rather than like leading up to that. And I love Lent for this reason of yeah. like just spirit and Advent, you know, those things to like spiritually prepare your heart and to bring that anticipation for what we're going to celebrate. And um, those have been big things for me. You know, my dad told me... Um, what I'm doing today is going to help prepare me for what God has for me tomorrow, you know? And if I'm not, if I'm not doing the work today and preparing myself for like what the Lord might have for me, um, then I'm going to miss out on things. I'm going to get burnt out on things. Um, and I don't know, John, our, our worship pastor, he's always told us like, how do we thrive in these busy seasons rather than just survive it? Like, right. We want to thrive in those spaces. Well, and being planted is su- such a good metaphor because ministry isn't a nine to five thing. Mm-hmm. Like whether you're in full time ministry or you're bi vocational, um, or if you're a volunteer, what whatever your ministry situation is, it's never nine to five. So like it's not like it, it's almost like we 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 are dependent on being planted Mm -hmm. because like if you're not then you don't really know when your new your new assignment is or you never know what's going to come up where are you running on empty or are you are you really planted and you're really ready for you know what god wants you to do that day or in Mm -hmm. that moment and i think i think we i think we underestimate the need to be daily like planted because we don't in the morning, I don't know what the day's gonna bring. I mean, I might calendar, yeah. but there's so much that happens in ministry that's not scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. When does that's our right. day ever go according to plan or 
there's always something that comes up that we're not, we didn't foresee or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. What are some practical ways you navigate that, that challenge? Because I think that where you do talk about like ministry is not necessarily nine to five, you know, you don't plan on, you know, the volunteer who's going through a really hard time calling you at a certain time. You don't plan mm-hmm. on some of the, some of these different things. And so how do you, how do you navigate that um, practically and bring balance and bring, yeah. f- bring refillment? That's hard. Cause it, and this is something that we all have to figure out in our own worlds and spaces. Um, but you know, at a place like Saddleback, sometimes everything could feel urgent, yeah. you know, everything could feel, and I'm the type of person that if I see a bubble on my phone that says like unread, I like start to get a little bit stressed that <laughs> why haven't I just completed that task or check that off my list or whatever. So like years ago, one of the things I, I chose to do was like turn off all notifications on my email Mm-hmm. and take out the little bubble that shows me how many unread I have um, and figured out systems in my life to say, hey, I'll get to those emails when it's when it's the appropriate time, you know? Mm-hmm. And even for how a lot of our team operates in how we communicate with each other, if I know, you know, Monday is the day all of our team is taking off, I'm going to do my best as a leader to respect my what I'm what we're encouraging our team to do is take that day of rest. I'm not going to be blowing them up with like, Hey, where's this at? Hey, I just want to make sure, you know, before Tuesday, like I want to do my best to put those boundaries in place for my team. And then hopefully our team starts to operate and respect those boundaries for myself. Um, But yeah, that's, that's been some pieces of it of like, okay, how do I save the things that are really urgent? Like those phone calls, Yeah, you know, because if I'm always on my phone when I'm with my family and I'm, st- I still have room to grow in this. And, uh, but if I'm always on my phone, just trying to like check off that one last thing and it leads to the dinner table, then it's like, okay, I need to, I need to step back. I can finish that later. Or I can, you know, get to it when it's not time for my family or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause then when that call does come, it's if I save it for the moments of like, hey, this is pretty urgent call, then it's like, oh, there's equity that's been built up in protecting that space, you know? That's good. Um, compared to like, oh, I've already cashed out on those chips. Everything's urgent. Everything's important. Everything's mm-hmm. a crisis. You know, how do I protect those things to really be yeah. the urgent in crisis rather than just like the small? Yeah. Maybe they're important, but it it it's not urgent, you know. Totally, totally. Yeah, the people over processes or products. Yeah, like the inter- the things that are that are interrupting your day that are that involve people are valid, and the things that you know aren't aren't as you know mm-hmm. urgent. But I'm really bad at this. I'll just go. I'll be on record and saying <laughs> I'm really bad at this. I, I I love a schedule and I love tasks lists and to do lists and it's 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 a real challenge and so I feel like God is always putting me in situations to grow in that like you know, that classic like we pray for patience and then we're in a situation where we're at the red light and we are wondering why we don't have patience and God's like literal mm-hmm. like you, there's a literal practical opportunity to grow in patience yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it I feel like we're always being interrupted in some way shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I think that and and it's funny that you say you're bad at this. I feel like this is something that like I was also very bad at and so now I'm very passionate about it. Um I we look at like I think there's a few different sides to like look at this for but something I love is is the parable of the talents like it talks mm-hmm. about and so much of what we learn from that parable in the kingdom of heaven is that everything is a stewardship, right? And so if God's put a calling on your God's put a calling on your life, you know, to serve in his house, like there's a stewardship there of of doing well, you know, and and giving your best and all of that. But also like if he's given you a family, that's a stewardship as well. The relationships mm-hmm. in your life are a stewardship too. And so I love what you said, Josh, too earlier about of just being mindful and attentive to the Holy Spirit and of of just leaning in, you know, into into those little moments. And also to what you said, Daniel, about just relational equity because this was something where it was like, I was just always, I was always working. Like, even if it was just, just on, on the phone or whatever. And even when I wasn't, I was just thinking about it, you know, mm. 
I was always just thinking about it and because like, because it's good things, right? Like it's things yeah. that like we're called to and we care about, we want to see, we want to see the kingdom of God expanded. We want to, we want to see people come to Christ. We want to see people grow in their knowledge and their expression of worship. We want all of those things and we want discipleship for our people. And that's all, that's all great stuff. But just knowing like leaning into the Lord of like, what do those boundaries look like? But also like, what does that intention look like? I know for me, um, as I was like learning that, I was like, okay, I had to, I had to learn and discern, okay, well, if I just want to like hit a few more, you know, planning things on my night of worship, you know, at seven o'clock at night. Well, in that moment, I think God's asking in this particular situation, God's asking me to care for my family in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's also other moments where, um, I was a campus worship player, got a call from like a volunteer and it was, and they're like, their life was just falling apart. You know, they had, mm-hmm. um, they'd just gotten laid off. They weren't sure if they were going to make rent. And they were just texting me like, dude, like I just need to talk. And like, I was like, yes, like that's a moment where I don't care what time of the day it is, right. you know, God's mm-hmm. asking me to be there exactly. in that moment. And so there's yeah. a discernment. I think that grows as, as you step into those things and as, as kind of like you navigate it of just being prayerful with the Holy Spirit yeah. of like, God, like, even just stopping, I loved learning this from Buddy Owens of just like, he t- calls it calls it like first minutes, like before he enters into a new thing, a new task, whether it's dinner, a meeting, or just a conversation, just opening his hands and be like, Lord, like, what are you asking of me in this moment? You know, mm. to go this way or that way, to say this or to not say this, Yeah, you know? Yeah. That's good. And, you know, with those like urgent calls, I think there's still space even in that for boundary. Yeah. Um, because caring for those in our lives doesn't mean we have to carry the burden for it. Hmm. Um, and there's, there's ways I think to gracefully like hear people and, and let them know that you're there for them, but to also let them know, Hey, I'm, Hey, right now, man, I'm so sorry hearing all of this, but right now I'm, I'm with my family, but this is my top priority that we connect on this first thing later tonight or tomorrow morning or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, because, Sometimes if you carry the burden, you'll lay other things down and then that's not healthy either. You're picking up things that yeah. you're not intended to pick up. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a fixer. So I want to be the person that's like, oh, I got, I got the word to, to fix this. I got whatever. And I, I, like, I, I loved what Dave Stone shared um, about when in leading students of like, he'll kind of help rather than just give him a solution or fix, he, he's like, Hey, what, what does scripture say about this? What, yeah. like, what are some other spaces that you know of that you could help seek, you know, uh, answer or comfort or whatever. And if, and most of the time it's going to point to Jesus, you know? Yeah. So what are we doing in, in those moments to help pointing people? But, um, so yeah, just guarding yourself, even in that, I think there's still space for boundaries. There's still space for, protecting the margins that you have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. What does this look like? What does this look like for the people you lead? Cause we talk about how in worship ministry, you know, it's not just, it's not just the weekend, but really it's a discipleship too, for the people that you're leading. Like, what does it, what does it look like for you guys to help the people who are under you or the volunteers, you know, that you've experienced at campuses like grow in this sort of thing? That's a great question. Because, and it's also tricky because I think at times as leaders, you feel, you feel the desire to, to model everything, right? Like mm-hmm. if you want your team to grow in, in rest and margin, you want to model that, but then you're, you're also wanting to like care for them constantly. Yeah. So sometimes you feel that tension of like, yeah. how do I, how do I model you know, boundaries and rest, but I'm also like wanting to go above and beyond and caring for them. Yeah. Um, I think there's something about, and I literally just like thought about this in the moment. So I, it's not really well thought out, but like, I do think there's something to like modeling the fruit of the spirit Hmm. to your team. Like I had a mentor tell me one time that, the fruit of the spirit um, isn't a buffet where you get to pick and choose which which fruit you want to display, but it's actually something that <clears throat> is promised us, and it's mm. it's 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 what we're called to live out. So I think about like the gift of patience. Like patience isn't really something that we want to live out. We'll we'll take 
some joy and, and, and the good stuff, but like things like patience. And sometimes people can see how well we live out the fruit of the spirit by the work we've been doing in Sabbath and rest. Mm. So if I'm always coming into meetings and, and things frantic and tired and whatever, it's going to be pretty obvious they know I'm not doing a good job of rest mm. and Sabbath and margin because I'm depleted. Mm. But if I'm always winsome and and just joyful and and filled, they're going to want to know what that is and yeah. where that's coming from. Yeah. And I think there's more power in that than us telling each other we need to do better at resting. You know, yeah. I think the fruit of our life is more powerful than than the this strategy we want to come up with. If we can just yeah. as leaders live this out, it'll be attractive. Yeah. By by the mm. fruit of our life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, I I think for me a, a lot of it is you know, without vision, the people perish and like making sure that as we do big things and heavy things and hard things as a team to make sure that the the vision of what we're trying to achieve or what God's doing within our church, that that's kind of at the forefront, you know, because we know we're going to have long days and nights with Easter rehearsals and stuff like that. So, and I love that about our team is there's always touch points of where we're gathering together to kind of hit pause and like, let's, let's refocus our eyes on truly what we're doing this all for, you know? Um, and I think that's been, that helps you in the, in the moments and in the day to days of what we're, um, if it's, you know, busy seasons and stuff like that. Um, but also what you're saying, Josh, of like displaying the fruits of the spirit, you know, I, I have a really busy three and a half year old and I'm always like, Milo, <laughs> like let's talk about the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Meanwhile, I like, why, why do I get a pass on not being patient with him when he's taking his time wanting to go to bed or something, you know, like how do I, and it's convicting. Cause sometimes I'm like, Oh, I, I'm actually need to be listening to what I'm trying to tell him, you know, of being more patient or gentle or kind or, yeah. you know, um, so it is, you know, just a, constantly like checking. I think there's yeah. power to in the in the subtle moments of I know rest is a hot word but like Taylor I feel like some of our our most beneficial meetings has been when we take time at the top just to like pr pray but like long pauses of breath hmm. before mm -hmm. we dive into different projects or or things mm -hmm. that we need to get done and so I don't, I think it's in the, the margins where we find the most beneficial moments of rest or time with the Lord, like just little moments here and there to center our thoughts on the why, like Daniel said. And I think as pastors, we get, we get pastor, the role of pastor mixed up with project manager. <laughs> mm. And we were never called to be project managers. We were always called to be pastors. Wow. And, um, Jesus didn't have Evernote and these, <laughs> you know, these apps that we have now that are wonderful and super helpful, and we need those things. But at the same time, too, if we if we want to teach our teams the 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 correct posture in our ministry, I think we also have to be good pastors, good mm -hmm. shepherds, and and making sure we're we're taking times to to refocus and. Recharge. That's, that's really good, guys. I love I love the idea of just just embodying the fruit of, of the spirit in your own life, carrying that and modeling that um, for the people that God's entrusted you to lead. Like whether you're a volunteer and you're leading people on a Sunday morning, or whether you're a worship leader or a pastor, um, just modeling that and just examining Which is yourself. Easier said than done, right? right? Oh like you gosh. said, Daniel. It's like it's so much. And easier I'm said already than on done. record saying I'm the worst at this because my <laughs> wife's going to listen to this and she's going to correct me. I know it. I know it. Mine too. Mine too. Gosh, yeah. Like there's there's so much there that we can lean in and and look at. And I I I think too something something too is just examining to the people that that you leave it lead as you're called to disciple them. 
because it's so contextual, like you guys were saying, it's so situational and looking for like, how are we living up in the margins and the mm-hmm. little things? How are we surrendering those to the Lord? I've, I've heard it said, and I'm not a parent yet, but Daniel's a parent, so you can tell me if this isn't true. But like, I've heard it said that for some kids, like just in ambition and stuff as they grow up, some you have to push forward mm-hmm. a bit and some you have to hold them back a little bit and just not necessarily hold them back, but call them to rest. Mm-hmm. And so I know for me, <laughs> Josh is laughing at me. I know I'm for, laughing at Daniel. <laughs> I know for, I know for me, like I was, I was the kid like that, um, that, all, that was just always like running hard at things just cause I loved them. And yeah. I know that I'm looking at, I'm just thinking about like the volunteers that God has entrusted me to pastor over my few years here. And I know that some of them, like I had one where it was like, man, like you've been volunteering every single weekend for the past three years. And I'm not also at the same time, I'm not quite seeing like the fruit of the spirit, you know? Mm, yeah. I'm seeing the the frantic, I'm seeing like the lack of joy. Mm, I'm seeing how yeah. that's coming out. It's like, okay, well, let's sit down and have a conversation about rest and just being with the Lord and what that can look like in your life. Because yes, you're called to serve. Yes, God is asking you to be, but let's talk about that. And likewise, on the flip side, I've had people where it's like, man, I see like they've got plenty of margin, whatever in their lives, but it's like, man, like I don't, they all serve like once every three months or whatever, or I'll give like this tiny little bit to the Lord. It's like, no, 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 no. Like you, I see so much more for you. I see like what God's calling you to here. I see like how he's calling you to serve in his house. Like there's yeah. so much for for you here and so much spiritual growth that that God has for you that yeah. um, he's inviting you into. And I want you to have eyes to see that. So I feel like there's such a discernment there that yeah. you have to be prayerful to of as you're walking through and um, as you just, you're with the people that God's entrusted you to pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And the relationship is what's going to help yes. help you in that, you know, cause everyone's so different and yeah. you know, there's spaces where we've had teammates that have actually been desiring to like mix audio, but there was never an invitation to do that. And so many times I think we could step back and, and just like, kind of uh, fill gaps and just like check lists off that we forget to invite people into more. And mm-hmm. we start to, we start to rationalize, Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to ask this. That's, you know, doing six services for Easter. That's too much. I would, I'm not going to ask this volunteer that, but sometimes that's exactly what they've been desiring or that yeah. that's going to fill them up in in a really sweet way that we don't. And that's something we've, we've, communicated uh, across our team is that we're not going to make the decision for our volunteers. We'll, we'll make the request, but in that we're also, there's a relationship there that's able to help balance that stuff. And we've also mm-hmm. had to do that ex- exact opposite of saying, Hey, we, we love that you get to serve with us, but right now just with all that's going on in your life and because we're walking through life with them and kind of having constant touch points, we could also discern, hey, I think right now is a season to slow down. You know, mm-hmm. now's a season to to just be a part of your church and to sit in the house and to um receive, you know, rather than give. Mm-hmm. Um I think is is part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. I think there's another there's a you mentioned like our staff and um earlier, Josh, and how Pastor Rick was leading us to like his word, first word, his word, last word. I'm remembering now um, kind of the saying that he tells our staff is uh, divert daily, withdraw weekly mm-hmm. and abandon annually, all of those things. And so, mm-hmm. so to lean into, lean into those principles, make sure that like you're hitting those marks. It's just an easy way to remember the things that, um, just to, the easy way to remember that, I love that yeah. to incorporate Sabbath into your, into your life. So I guess like turning, um, turning towards like, Thinking and thinking about the people on the on the other side of this podcast who are listening, the volunteer leader, um, the worship leader, the volunteer worship pastor, what would be your guys' prayer for them if they're maybe they're feeling burnt out, maybe they're feeling feeling weighed down, maybe they feel like they're struggling to find that that balance, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and whether that's tilted to one side or the other, what would be your prayer for them? I think tell people, you know, I think having trusted and in, in um, safe friends to communicate stuff to is hmm. probably a big piece and to admit it to yourself being like, man, I feel like I'm getting frustrated easy, easily that over things that I don't normally get frustrated about. I think when you start to see those signs for me, it's helpful to be like, Hey, I, I, 
you know, Josh and I are pretty close. I'll communicate with Josh and being like, yo man, I'm feeling a burn on this right now, or, or I feel stressed out about this. And he'll often bring me a different perspective that I'm so caught up in something else. You know, that's a big piece, like bringing people into that, not carrying it alone, um, are, are huge pieces. So if you are feeling burnt out, if you are stressed out, I think if you haven't told someone, make sure you tell someone. And if there's someone go to a therapy, you know, get help for what you need. Cause, um, we've never been called to like sacrifice our families through ministry. You know, we've yeah. never been called like God has good plans for us. And if there's things that are tearing us down, um, and causing harm to us through our service in ministry, it's, uh, that's not God's plan for us, you know? Yeah. Um, so sometimes taking a, a, a break to get healthy is the most important thing. Sometimes finding that, oh, I don't have community is what you, you need to step into. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those are key things in, as you are in seasons of burnout or whatever, to make sure that you're in that, in that community to help converse. And yeah, that's really, that with. that's really good, Daniel. I love that. I love that you reemphasize that of like finding people that you can be honest with, that you can be 100 with. Um, about like where you're feeling spiritually, where you're feeling emotionally, um, how you're feeling physically and all of that stuff that you can just be totally honest with yourself and with them. Yeah. Because they can give you that perspective, you know, to carry to carry through things and having like a mentor or yeah. someone like who's a few steps ahead of you yes. or even further along ahead of you. Because it's like, I know for me, like looking at the mentors in my life, I'm like, wow, like they've been in ministry for um, a lot longer than I have. Yes. And I see the health in their yeah. family. I see the health in their kids. I see like the spiritual growth, you know, that they've experienced over the year. I see the way they pastor people. And that's what I want to be, yeah. you know? And so to lean into those people that you can find in your life, I think is huge. Yeah. Yes. And that, honestly, that's where I I wanted to go with this, Taylor, is that hmm. I think mentor has is such a loose, like it's used so often. But I think in ministry, and and when I say ministry, I'm talking about anyone in ministry in any type of ministry. So, if you're a volunteer minister, your staff minister, whatever, it's all, it's all the same because all of our our goals are all the same. Second Timothy is to finish the race well. Yeah, and I think oftentimes we don't finish the race well because we're not learning from people who are close to finishing. Meaning they've been in, mm-hmm. they've been a believer in ministry for a long time, and they've seen everything. Yeah, and we're not learning from people like that, and that's really the goal. The goal is to finish well. Mm. You know, well done, my good and faithful servant. That should be all of our goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our goals should never be how big and how amazing and how wonderful can I make something or do something. It's what am I going to do to finish well? Yeah, mm-hmm. in in my ministry, but also with my family, yeah, and and in my relationships. Yeah. So I think finishing well is really important. Yeah. I don't even remember what the question was. Yeah. But I do. But I do. But I do. I do believe that for anyone in ministry context. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Question was, what's your parting prayer for someone maybe who's experiencing that right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I think my prayer is is, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the identity the identity piece, yeah, is. Hmm. I think we all start to go the wrong direction when we start to confuse our identities. Hmm. Like, if we if we just always go back to what our identity is, no matter what our ministry context is we start to realize um, the joy in what we're being invited into because we realize that the foundation isn't built on us. Yeah. yeah. And we're just kind of like brick by brick adding to the house of God, to the yeah. family of God. And so for me, what, I, what I've what i done, and, I, and that's my prayer for anyone who's struggling with, with you know, being close to burnout is take some time to pray and to realize what I'm being invited into and what my part isn't. Yeah. 
and then you start to like some of the weight starts to fall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's easier said than than, than done because some people are in really hard p- spots where yeah, you know they're not feeling like they have that freedom to think like that. But but the found the foundation is Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it isn't me, and it's not Taylor, and it's not Daniel. Um, it's not anyone but Christ. And so there's a lot of freedom for me when I think like that. Yeah. It kind of kind of relieves the, the pressure. Yeah. Like I don't have to crush this song or, or say the exact words that I, I think I need to say because it's it's not built on me. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, there's this... Um... We've shared this story a few times with our team, but it was the first Easter that we were planning on doing uh, an outdoor and an indoor uh, service. And we're meeting with Pastor Rick and, you know, we're thinking all these huge things, big things. It's going to be a lot of work. And mm-hmm. right when we um, right when we started this meeting with Pastor Rick, he, he asked us all, he's like, close your laptops. Everyone like, just settle. And he's like, Saddleback wasn't built on one weekend. And he's like, this could be the greatest idea or the worst idea. He's like, but our church wasn't built on one weekend. And he's like, and it's not going to be one weekend that takes us out, you know? And there was something in that that I've carried of just like, you know what? Saddleback isn't built on me. Saddleback isn't built on one weekend that has a rough tech issue or whatever it may be, um, that it's... God's been exactly what you're saying, Josh. It's been like brick by brick, you know, moment by moment, week by week that God's been building his church. And I think there's so much um, freedom when you carry that posture. And I think that's a prayer of mine for myself and for anyone else out there that, that you would really, it, it is that, that it's an invitation that we're a part of. It's not something that is built on us, you know, and finding space to, to be open handed with that and all of that. So yeah, that's, it's huge that it's, that you realize it's not built on you. That's huge. That's so important for us to remember guys, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for pouring in, pouring into the people listening. And just, if you're out there on the other side and you're feeling tired and you're feeling weird, just know that you're not alone, that we're with you. We're for you. We're praying for you. That grace is for you. Faith is for you. All of those promises of scripture are for you too. And so Amen. just hope that, just know that we're here for you and, and with you guys, but we love you. Thanks for joining us on the Lead with Worship podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, thanks. Well, I really hope that that conversation was encouraging and helpful for you today. And I'm guessing even even convicting for you today, like for me and others. I especially appreciated Josh talking about the fruit of the Spirit and truly asking myself, you know, and reflecting on days recently of entering environments where I've been lacking in patience or lacking in a gentleness and kindness and really trying to wrestle through, um, gosh, just those rhythms and the prioritization of time with God and just being uh, a child of God. So yeah, really love those guys and really appreciate how they are striving, uh, even in this imperfect uh, dance and race um, towards just all that God has for us. So really grateful for Josh and Daniel and Taylor. So I hope it was really helpful for you as well. Hey, before we go, just a couple more things. You just, you remember, you can stay connected us uh, connected to us in a few different ways. First of all, just stay up to date with our music, Saddleback Worship's original music, wherever you stream your music. And also, we want to hear from you. We actually love hearing from you. So we love your questions, episode ideas, ways we can serve you. So just email us at worshippodcast at saddleback.com. And lastly, this podcast is one of a handful of podcasts produced by Saddleback Church. I love the doable discussion discipleship podcast. There's also the well podcast and there's others. So be sure to check out those links in the episode description. Hey, thanks for joining us. We're really glad we got to spend some time together with you today and we'll see you next time on lead with worship.